great to have you with us. Global Disruptors series recommences now. Thanks there to Laura, to uh, Deepak, and Dr. Bashka. We're now continuing our Global Disruptors series. Dynamic founders from India and the UAE's unicorn businesses on the same stage. What does it take to create a product that changes the market status quo and dominate a sector? Well, stay tuned to find out. The Global Disruptor series will be taking a deep dive into the minds of trailblazers whose cutting-edge innovative ideas have disrupted markets and changed the way we quite literally do business. Only at India Global Forum, where innovation meets enterprise. Well, I'd like to welcome on stage uh, Sumit Jamua. Uh, Sumit is chairman and CEO of Global Gene Corp. Sumit. Great to Take see hands you. of fist pump. <laughs> Keep it official. <laughs> Keep it official, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so to, to kick off the second part of our Global Disruptor, Disruptors series, I'm here with uh, Sumit um, Jamua, Chairman and CEO of Global uh, Gene Corp. Um, it's a genomics data, therapeutic insights and applications company. Its ambitious vision is to enable genomics for two and a half billion people in Asia and the Middle East region. It's looking to do this by building the deepest and most comprehensive genomics data sets for these populations. Global Gene Corp is solving for the existing global data bias where 80% of all existing genomic data comes from populations of European ancestry. It's very technical, um, Sumit. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, what I like about the, the term genomics is very, very close to economics, which I know a lot about. Genomics, I'm not so uh, hot on, but that's why we've got you here um, at the India Global Forum. It's great to have you with us. Thank Fascinating you. work you do from what I've been reading up. You've said, Sumit, that um, the future of healthcare is accessible, diverse, and genetically personalized. But tell us a bit more about what you mean by that. Uh, sure. I, I think, look, we are going through the, one of the greatest technological breakthroughs um, in terms of healthcare at this point of time. And it's a confluence of two forces. The first is our ability to understand what's within each one of our cells, which is our DNA. And the second is the uh, AI machine learning compute revolution. And when you combine the two, it's actually disrupting cross industries. Uh, so what I mean by that is, look, the DNA, think of it very simply as the book of life. It's our instruction manual for each one of us, which is personalized. And uh, the possibilities are ab about what we can do with it if we understood what was written in the book, book of life um, are incredible. And that's what fascinates me about the work that we do. And that's what fascinates me about the industry that we're in. So tell us sort of more specifically about some of the work you're doing at the moment. Sure. So uh, look, the promise, um, let me uh, take 30 seconds just to step back and give you, uh, you know, if you think about the DNA and the book of life, uh, it's the instruction manual. It's got three, just over three billion words. And those words are basically just four letters, A, T, C, and G. And depending on which letter appears at what position in that three billion sequence, it can give you indication of whether you're gonna have blue eyes, brown eyes, it, to whether you have a predisposition for a particular kind of disorder. And now what is fascinating about it is if I'm able to find that, then I'm able to predict things for me as an individual or for you, Greg, as an individual, which is totally personalized to you. And which means that you have a possibility that you may never fall sick with that disease because you can ward off and take the steps to ward it off in time. And if you do fall sick, then you have an opportunity to make sure that the medication that you take is personalized to you or medication in the future that will be created is personalized to you, right? So that's what it is. Now, the work that we do is very simple. All this works on reference data. So I need to understand what a good Sumit looks like or what a good Greg looks like to be able to give recommendation to someone like Sumit who comes in later when I just look at the DNA. Now, the good news for you is you're well represented. So 80% of the world is people of European ancestry. Um, you know, the data that we have right now. 
Uh, whereas, you know, the Indian subcontinent, for example, is 20% of the world's population. It's less than 2% of genomic data and insight, which means that when you look at India and, and the Indian subcontinent, or you look at Asia, there are about, you know, Asia has about 6,000 to 7,000 ancestries. India has 4,500 ancestries. If I don't have the reference, I cannot be giving a precise, um, a, a precise solution. And that's where genetics breaks down. So how, how far down the line are you in to research and development? Uh, well, we've been going at it for a few years. Uh, so we are, the, obviously, uh, we are the largest in India, right? And which is, it's, it's a great segue that we had Deepak right there because Deepak and his team have been a phenomenal supporter of our work. And so we're very grateful for Invest India, to Invest India, and for, uh, you know, for all that Invest India brings together in terms of supporting that work. Uh, we are on, well on our way to map out the 4,500 different ancestries in India. We are well on our way to map out certain specific diseases to find innovative, um, you know, uh, what you call targets to find solutions for, for, for you know, which, which have impact on global diseases like diabetes and other things. So, um, so that's something we're well on our way. We are looking at other Asian countries uh, having built that in India uh, and how we can take it out into other markets to, to make sure that people from different parts of the world can benefit from, from, ge from genomics. But Samit, is it lab work? Is it mostly in the lab doing all this analysis yeah. or is it computer based with a lot of data that's, um, th that's gathered over years? You know? Well, well uh, you, you'd love it. It's lab work. It's also a lot of compute because when you create a book, a virtual book of life, um, which has got three billion words, it takes a lot of bioinformatics uh, horsepower to be able to understand what those things means. Um, and then you take it forward, which is where it's in pipeline is to say, if I have that insight, um, if I have the signal for what is causing a disease, for example, a di for diabetes, if I have a signal, then I need to work with partners to make sure that I can create uh, a medicine which can do something about that signal. Has that happened yet? Is there a medicine? It, it is, it, absolutely. So the first bit about the mapping, the lab work, as well as the bioinformatics and sequencing and creating the digital footprint, that has happened. And, but we still have, have a way to go. How do you find research and developers who know enough to get the information you need at the particular time? Well, well the good thing is we have a great scientific team. You know, that they are some of the leading people in the, in the world of genomics. Uh, so having that scientific scope is really important. I think it also is very helpful that India has, you know, clear governance as well as para parameters around this research. Uh, as well as the talent pool and the infrastructure which are, where you can, you can tie up with to move that forward. You mentioned diabetes. What about cancer, let's say? Would it move on to that? Or? Well, well, look, cancer is something which, you know, genetics has had a huge impact in treatment. Um, if you look at a general class, about, you know, five years ago, I looked at a study which said three out of four, chemotherapy as a class, three out of four cancer patients, it was ineffective. That is a staggering number. And cancer is one of the biggest spend areas and one of the biggest distress causes from, uh, for, for human, human beings. Um, so when you turn that around, what, what, has, what has happened is that right now, if you go for a cancer treatment, people do the genetic profiling of the tumor, they do the genetic profiling of, of the individual to see which treatment is likely to work or which combination of treatment is likely to work for that particular individual. And that has seen the success rate change dramatically. Right, and that's the and that's the it, so cancer is at the forefront of that. It's already been used, and that's where um, in uh, across different areas like complex disorders, uh, like diabetes and, and you know heart conditions, etc., or rare disorders where you have one gene change can cause a rare disorder. Uh, that's where genetics is being used quite significantly at this point of time. So, so I mean, what would you say are the challenges that are there at the moment for the genomics? Uh, um, sector and, and industry? Yeah. Well, well, the biggest challenge is, and if you look at all the literature right now, this is something we'd recognize um, about eight years ago. It's the fact that people aren't included, that 80, there's still a data bias, which means you cannot get a complete picture. Always remember, you know, if, if you remember the early days of CD, where, uh, you know, when I tried to say something, CD could not understand what, uh, what I was saying. Yeah. And the way that was solved was that quite a few training data sets from Indian accents and other accents were added on, which meant Siri improved. And now, 
even my son can say something and you know, an Alexa or a Siri or Google will understand what he's saying. Yeah. Um, that's exactly what's happening. So we have, the, we have the technologies. We need to train and create the right data sets, which then allow us to give an unbiased answer or a personalized answer to, to, to us as an individual. And what is the next step for, for your business, for Global Gene uh, Corp? What, what, what in terms of expansion are you looking at? So I, th I think, look, um, it's, it's what uh, you know, Deepak just said. It's, look, if you have a, over a billion people who are going to be below age of 35, um, no country in the world, and ex extend that to across the world, uh, no country in the world has the ability to uh, have that, many, that much resource to solve for healthcare problems unless there's a fundamental shift. And we are enabling that fundamental shift because when you create the foundation, which everyone is going to use, to be able to deliver the new parad healthcare paradigm where you don't fall sick, where when you do fall sick, it, everything's personalized. That's, that's the vision that we are, we are, we are, we are looking to, uh, we, we, are, we are aspiring for. Now, if you look at that vision, uh, the next step is, one is, of course, is deeper, you know, a collective comprehensive understanding across different population. So we have six to 7,000 ethnicities we have to map. We have probably mapped about, you know, a cert certain portion of that, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, the second aspect of that is around then using that in insight into creating, um, creating cures for diseases which, uh, which are impacting billions of people. It's incredible the work you're doing, and what kind of response are you getting in India um, from the work you're doing? Look, I think it's not just India, it's actually global, right? Because when you look at the first application, this is global life sciences industry and pharmaceutical industries, which is looking to solve for the global, global, global problem. Um, so it's, it's been phenomenal and it's grown, uh, in, you know, as you would expect. I think what the pandemic, the silver lining to the pandemic is that um, it has actually accelerated the whole healthcare innovation, particularly related to genomics by at least five to 10 years. So uh, we, are seeing, we are seeing that as a positive silver lining of the pandemic in terms of moving things forward. And in the medical world, how is it received? How is it being received? I think people are, the clinicians love the fact that you're able to personalize. Look, as a clinician, when I talk uh, to clinicians, they care about their patients. And uh, they work incredibly hard to make sure that the parent, their patients are looked after. And, but they don't have time. And if I say, look, you've got to read these 500 things which are coming in every month, they do not have the time. Whereas if I give them a technology-led solution, which says all you need to do is type in the medicine you're about to prescribe Greg and see if it's suitable for him or not based on his genetics, um, they love that. And immediately, because it makes them more effective in, in caring for their, for their patients. Is this something in five years, in two years, three years, five years, or in, in our children's time that they'll benefit mostly? It's happening now. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. Incredible. That's really brilliant. Well, listen, uh, Sumit Jamil, we, we've run out of time, sadly, but really good to hear what you're doing and, uh, with genomics. And uh, long may you be uh, successful in working towards this amazing goal. Thank you. And uh, again, you know, thanks to Manoj and, and team as well, and congratulations to them for an incredible forum. Brilliant. Thanks, thanks. a lot. Great. Great. Thank you. Oh, well, we, we do this. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sumit Jamil.